When we mix certain materials together, we can cause chemical reactions. This is when the atoms of one material interact with the atoms of another material. During this interaction, atoms will bond together or break apart. Electrons can also be released or captured by atoms during this reaction. When we talk about atoms, you will usually hear the term ion used. An ion is an atom which has an unequal number of protons or electrons. An atom has a neutral charge when it has the same number of protons and electrons, because the protons are positively charged and the electrons are negatively charged, so they balance out. If the atom has more electrons than protons, then it's a negative ion. If the atom has more protons than electrons, then it's a positive ion. Rather than trying to understand this complex construction, we're going to simplify it down to this simple model of a cell with a single cathode and anode. In this cell, we have the electrolyte liquid, which is one third sulfuric acid and two thirds water. We have the positive electrode, which is the cathode. This is made from lead oxide. We then have the negative terminal, which is the anode. This is made from pure lead. When these materials are combined, we're going to get a small chemical reaction between the atoms. I'll show the atoms of these materials with these colored spheres. The positive cathode terminal of lead oxide is going to react with the sulfate in the electrolyte. This will form a layer of lead sulfate on the cathode terminal. During this reaction, an oxygen ion is ejected from the cathode and into the electrolyte. Once in the electrolyte, these oxygen ions will combine with the hydrogen ions to form water. At the same time, the lead atoms on the anode are going to react with the sulfate ions in the electrolyte. This reaction will create a layer of lead sulfate around the electrode. During this reaction, two electrons are released and collected in the negative terminal. So now we have a buildup of electrons on the negative terminal. As electrons are negatively charged, this means we have a difference in charge across the two terminals, and we can measure this with a voltmeter or a multimeter. If you think about a magnet, the electrons are negatively charged, and so they repel each other. These are attracted to the positive terminal, which has less electrons. However, they can't reach this yet. So if we provide a path for the electrons, such as a wire, then the electrons will flow through this to get to the positive terminal. We can then place things such as a lamp in the way of these electrons and use them to do work such as illuminating the lamp. While the path exists, the chemical reaction continues. But this won't last forever. The chemicals required for the reaction will run out. The acid becomes diluted and weaker, and a buildup of lead sulfate coats both of the electrodes. This means the materials of the electrodes are becoming more similar, and so the chemical reaction becomes harder to achieve. But luckily, this chemical reaction can be reversed. So if we supply the battery with electricity from the alternator, we can start to reverse the reaction. The electrons enter the negative terminal and rejoin with the lead sulfate, releasing the sulfate into the electrolyte to leave just lead on the negative plate. The sulfate ions enter the electrolyte and combine with the hydrogen ions to release the oxygen ions. And so the electrolyte acid becomes stronger. The oxygen ions combine with the lead to create lead oxide, and this releases the sulfate back into the electrolyte, making it even more stronger. If we were to leave the battery to fully discharge for too long or too many times, it becomes very difficult to reverse the chemical reaction. Additionally, the sulfate layer could break away from the electrodes and accumulate at the bottom of the battery. This means it will no longer participate in the chemical reaction so the battery needs to be repaired or replaced. So, when we look at the battery, this chemical reaction is occurring between every plate in every cell to provide the hundreds of amps of current to start the motor and also provide the voltage to power the lights, etc. This is then recharged by the alternator. Okay guys, that's it for this video, but to continue your learning, then check out one of the videos on screen now and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, as well as theengineeringmindset.com.